Hey everybody, it's Dave Dugdale, learningvideo.com. I know I already reviewed the crane before, but basically this, what this video is about is which one am I gonna decide to buy? Now this, I'm not gonna go into great detail and depth about the crane and all the things that it can do because there's hundreds of videos out there and I've already done a review on it. Um, but primarily the, the thing I wanna talk about here is the crane M versus the crane, which one should I buy? You guys might be in a similar boat where maybe you have, have a lighter camera with a pretty light lens. This is the Sony a6500 with the 10 to 18. Um, so really quickly, I wanna just talk about the size of these uh, two because they're really not that big of a difference. Let's see if I can actually hold this up next to this one. Uh, this one is obviously taller. The crane has bigger motors um, than the other one. And besides that, the same battery, same, you know, the handle almost seems exactly the same. Maybe the thickness of this, yeah, this is definitely diff, uh, thicker. So this supports obviously larger cameras. So go, really quickly going through the specs, uh, Argos go for price first. This one's $650, which is actually a pretty good bargain. And this one is $450, the Crane M, which is even a better bargain. So payloads, uh, this one can handle 350 grams to 1800 grams. And this one can handle 125 grams to 650 grams. So Really, this Crane M is designed for smaller cameras like the RX100 um, Mark V. I, on the other hand, am maxing out the payload right here. But it works, and it works really well. So I don't know if they're really being conservative with their numbers before or what. So let me see if I can add this up for you. The 10 to 18 is 225 grams. The A6500 is 453 grams. I've actually got an ND filter on there. Uh, it's, um, I would, I don't want you to guess, five grams maybe. It's made by Tiffin. So I'm coming in at 683 grams. The max payload on this is 650. So I'm over by, I don't know, uh, 33 grams or so. So, but it works. Um, and I'm gonna show you some footage here in a second. Um, you know, going back to the days of the Nebula, one of the first ones I looked at years ago, I mean, there's no shaking, no vibration, no weirdness. And if you wanna go inverted, it's really easy. You just kind of hold it a little bit here and then boom, it's rock solid. I mean, it's, <laughs> it works, you know, it works great. I don't feel any sort of micro vibrations and I haven't touched, touched one setting in the software, nothing. I mean, back in the Nebula days or the, the DS1 or the MS1 or the Pilot Fly or the, all the different ones that I've looked at, they all had their problems. Um, this, I mean, I think it really comes down to is the software. The software is so good. Right out of the box, I don't know if it's adapting to this weight payload by itself or what, but it's doing fantastic. So first up is the full-size crane, not the M, but the full-size. You can see I'm walking down this path. I've walked down this path many times with different ones. I thought it was a good example. I mean, I've used these cranes in other events and stuff like that. You can see I'm pan up to the tree. But since I've already kind of set this as a precedent on all the other videos I've done, I thought, well, might as well do the same thing for these. And I did this in my review. I've done this with the Nebula, just walking down this path right here. And as you can see, it does a really nice job. And this is very similar to what I had in my review. I don't think as much has changed um, smoothness wise, you know, maybe my walk needs to get a little bit better, but I don't, I don't think I'm doing that bad of a job walking smoothly down the, the path here. All right, now I'm gonna whip around and you can see it writes itself really fast. Whip around again. The Pilot Fly H2 would have a problem with this. It would go off kilter, off rotation when I did that, it would take two to three seconds to correct, where this one is like, there is no over correction on the roll axis. Um, I'm gonna pan up to the tree here. So again, this is the full size crane, the one that cost $650, yeah, $650. Um, just walking to the side there, looks pretty good. And now right now I'm going into inverted mode. As you can see, I just went down. I'm going low. And 
and it looks good. I don't see any micro vibrations. I mean, obviously you can maybe see some of the steps that I'm doing. I'm trying to walk as carefully as I can. And I'm just gonna run maybe up against these, uh, the grass. You can see I have autofocus turned on. What happens when we use the same exact camera, lens combination with the smaller crane? You know, I'm not seeing any sort of micro vibrations, jitter, or something that you might have when you've exceeded the payload. I'm not really seeing that here. And I think I had, the exposure was slightly different, so the clouds are a little bit blown out here, but panning up to the tree. Looks very similar to the other move I had done. And I'm just gonna kinda turn the corner here. And then try to walk as steady as I can, and as straight as I can. I'm taking pretty small footsteps. And I'll whip around this way. Looks good. Whip back. Also looks good. All right, walking up to the tree. I'll go up to the tree. Come down. Look to the right. Looks good. And then we'll try inverted mode. Yeah, it should do it any second. Nope, going up to the tree. And then I think I did inverted mode after that. And we're going to inverted mode. And now I'm just checking the balance, brought it to my eye, now I'm bringing it down to the ground. And here we go in inverted mode. And it looks good. And I think I go up to the grass again. Actually, I think I just switched hands right there. All right, with the Crane M, I can actually, and I've done this, um, mount a Rode VideoMic Pro on top of here. And it works fine, it bounces and it does great. Um, the only thing I can't do, obviously when you have a mic up here, is do this. I usually just kind of gently hold this and I go into inverted mode. And as you can see, I've got a problem. The mic being right there. And unfortunately, if I go back, uh, on some gimbals, they'll have like a quarter 20 off to the side and I could mount a microphone like this way and I could run the cable up. Um, on this one, there's no quarter 20. The only quarter 20, as you can see, is like, I just put the plate on here so I could, I could put it down without fearing it going over. Um, the other thing I haven't tried yet, I'm pretty excited to try, is you know definitely with this camera, my RX100 Mark V mount it on here and I believe I take the control cable from here into that part and with the software I'm not sure how but it'll actually um, zoom so if I want to zoom with this camera there is a control uh, a tight and a wide right here right right where my finger is I don't know if you can see that and then, then I can control the zoom as well which would be amazing now this lens the 10 to 18 is a zoom lens. Um, unfortunately, I was looking through the manual here and I can't, it doesn't talk about this lens working with the zoom function. So I'm gonna definitely try it. I know the 10 to, no, the 18 to 105 works, but this 10 to 18, I don't know if it'll actually zoom, but that would be really cool to be able to go along, tap to record, and also be able to zoom in and zoom out just by controlling this, uh, this up and down switch. Um, that would be really cool. So really when it comes down to it, um, I use this camera the majority of the time, the 6500 with the 10 to 18 on the gimbal. Sometimes I'll put like a 55 mil on there for some really tightening subjects, which turns into more like, I don't know, 80, 85 mil. Um, but most of the time it's this lens. So it's cheaper, it's lighter, the performance is just as good. Uh, I'm gonna probably go ahead and buy this one. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys later, bye.